In this episode, our challenge is to live in our motorhome for £10 per day. That's right. Seven days and seven nights for the small, measly sum of just £70. That's just £10 a day. For everything, that's including fuel, food, a fun activity and all of our camping requirements. During our quest, we stay at and visit some amazing places that are mainly free. We show you where we stay and how we choose each location. Where we get our water. How and what we eat. And even where we empty the toilet. All on just £10 a day. Also, we share with you a breakdown of all our spending for the week. Can we actually manage it? Keep watching as we reveal all. Stealth camping is when you stay overnight in a camper or a motorhome at a place that's not designated for overnight camping. Also referred to as free camping or wild camping. So Rob, what are we doing this week? This week, Peg? Yeah? We're going stealth camping with a twist because our budget is going to be £70 for the whole seven days. So we will have to go shopping. We can have to get water from somewhere, but the big issue will be emptying the toilet. Mm. I can't see a way where we'll be able to do that without paying for it yeah and if any of you have got any ideas of how you do that um, without paying for an overnight or for a campsite fee please let us know because if you go to other countries they tell you where the dump points are but not in the uk no i can't, i've been unsuccessful can't find any dump points in the uk so none that are free at least mm. we're gonna do this as cheaply as we possibly can and still enjoy ourselves because we're going to do an activity every day as well, Peg. We are National Trust members because we love going around all the different National Trust places and the um, the nature reserves that they have as well. There are an awful lot of open houses at the National Trust as well, so you don't have to be a National Trust member to be able to get in and you can get in for nothing. So we're looking forward to the challenge. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, we'll do the best we can. I don't know if I'm excited. <laughs> Yeah, so this is going to be a blueprint for going forward. Let's just see how cheaply we can live in our motorhome. We did a quick shop to get a few extra bits. Most of the stuff that we used we actually already had in the store cupboard and I'll give you a full breakdown of all the costs later on. We use Search for Sites to find our first night's stay at Monera Lead Mines. We'll show you other apps we use later in the video. Where are we, Peg? We're at the lead mines in Minera. And last night we did some stealth camping here. Yeah. And how did you get on, Peg? I slept like a log. Slept like a log. Got up a bit early. <laughs> right, we've been up to catch the sunrise. Um, it was already light, actually, but uh, I think we got a little bit peeking through there. And uh, we had a rather pleasant night. We were on our own here. Yeah, really good. Yeah, and there's walks to do from here as well. So it's a, a good place to walk your dog. Yeah, it's about quarter past six in the morning now. We'll go for a little walk. Minera Lead Mines and the Country Park offer a fascinating glimpse into the industrial past of the beautiful Cloedog Valley. It's situated at the head of the valley. Minera is a great starting point for the Cloedog Trail or for accessing the beautiful countryside of Minera Mountain. You can come here to enjoy a picnic or take a walk along the old railway line and explore Minera Lead's Country Park. Minera has a fascinating history and the first written record of the lead miners of Minera dates from 1296 when Edward I hired them to work in his new mines in Devon. This is what we had on this day and the costs. So we found out on the Park for Night app that there was free water available not far from us. We whizzed over there had a lovely chat to the couple who run it and offered the service. And while we were there, they said, enjoy Wales and gave us a couple of cans of these. Cheers. Other brands are available. After leaving the lead mines, we decided to spend the day at Erthig, a National Trust property just down the road. Erthig was the home of the York family who bequeathed their estate to the National Trust. It's set in beautiful grounds and gardens and is a much loved home filled with stories and pictures of the York family. What's really unique about the estate is it's also brimming with lots of poems, stories and pictures of the York family's servants. So what are we doing now, Rob? 
Right, we're off to a car park in Chirk for the night. You know how to treat a girl. You're very lucky, Peggy. <laughs> I'm exceptionally lucky. This is what we had on this day and the costs. Good morning. It's just gone 6am. We spent the night on Chirk Car Park. It wasn't a bad night at all. There was a car alarm about half 11 peg. Yeah. That went on for about 10 minutes till somebody dealt with it. But other than that, it was actually really quiet despite a couple of the bad reviews that were on Park for Night. But uh, yeah, it was all right. And we slept okay and I had no hesitation to come back here again. That was a success. We're now off to Chirk Castle to have a look around there. Formerly a coal mining town, Chirk is not far from Oswestry in Wrexham. It's also a stop on the old mail coach along the A5 London to Holyhead route. For a small place, it has a remarkable history and was the scene of a conflict between Henry II and the Welsh in 1165. Chirk Castle was built in 1295 by Roger Mortimer de Chirk to keep Wales under English rules. The castle was built with defence in mind and has five metre thick walls. Where are we, Peg? We're at Chirk Castle car park. It's an absolutely beautiful day. We're sitting outside in the shade just enjoying the surroundings. Just had lunch. Just had a lovely lunch. We hadn't actually got somewhere planned for tonight, but, you know, that's going to be fairly straightforward, surely. Except we've been <laughs> thrown a little curved ball, have we not? So Jack's got good news about his job, so that, that's that been really fantastic. And he's just contacted us and said that they want to celebrate with us tonight. So they want to buy us a drink tonight. Because <laughs> we said, we're on a budget of £10 a day at the moment, mate. Uh, yeah. if, we, if there's any celebrating <laughs> to do, you're paying for it. <laughs> They're going to uh, buy us a drink. Now, our challenge is to get into Chester City Centre, park somewhere for nothing overnight, so we can have a drink with them and also enjoy the city. Now, can we do this, Peg? Well, I hope so. Chester's a lovely place to poodle around anyway, but, um, yeah, we're just going to have to see if we can do anything. So, um, we have absolutely no idea yet. Uh, where we're going to be parking up tonight. We normally, when we go and stay in Chester, because we do stay there quite a lot, we go to the Little Rudy, and it only costs a fiver overnight. But when you're on a £10 a day budget, that's a huge amount of money. Yeah, we're not paying £5 tonight to no, stay so there. we've got to find somewhere else, so that's our challenge for tonight. So, um, yes, our mission, should we accept it, is to find somewhere in Chester tonight. For nothing. <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> or cheaper, ideally. <laughs> Are we Rob? We are in Chester City Centre. We found a space to stay for tonight, easy walking distance, and what is it, Peg? It's free. It's completely free. So we did try and come here earlier, it was full of cars. We came back after driving around, unable to find a space somewhere else, and miraculously a few spots have uh, now appeared. Why are we out tonight? Well, strictly speaking fully confidential so I can't say a word but it's something work related and it's just a mini celebration uh, that we're out tonight. Invited the retired personnel to join us and, uh, and, and Mum Rob. Um, yeah just having a little celebration on a Tuesday night, why not? The other thing to say as well is we're on a tight budget aren't we Rob? Very tight. The reason we can come out for a drink tonight is because we're paying. This is what we had on this day and the costs. We're on the banks of the River Dee in Chester. So we've had a lovely peaceful night in our stealth camping location. Cost us nothing. Cost us absolutely nothing and we've come for a lovely walk. This, how much does this walk cost us this morning by the beautiful River Dee? Absolutely nothing. Who says the best things in life are free? I mean the sun's shining, it's absolutely beautiful. The boats are sailing up and down the river. To be fair we couldn't have picked a be better week to go on. <laughs> Because you don't need as much money when the when the sun's shining, do you, to entertain yourself? But we've not National Trust today, we're just going for a walk. Chester is a beautiful cathedral city on the River Dee, very close to the England-Wales border. It has the most complete city walls, the oldest racecourse and the largest Roman amphitheatre 
in Britain. The cathedral is 1,000 years old and houses many Tudor black and white buildings, including the Rose Shopping Galleries, which are 700 years old. It's the day when we need to find a way of emptying the black waste. We are in Mould and we're on this fabulous little site. We paid a fiver to empty the toilet. Yeah. But as a bonus, you get water. Wow. And you can actually stay here for the night. So it's five pound on the CL. Incredible. Five pound to stay here. Wherever we went, it was going to cost us a fiver to uh, empty the toilet. So we thought, well, even though this is the stealth week, we might as well just stay on the campsite. We're still sticking to our 10 pound budget. So five pounds has gone. Staying here and emptying the toilet. Five pounds on food today then, Peg? Yeah, we'll have to really tighten the belts today. Will that extend to a beer at any point, do you think? No. No. We normally spend about ten pounds a week on washing. We're not going to be able to do that this week because that would eat into our budget too much, so I'm going to just hand wash the smalls. So we've got a, I don't know if you can see that, it's an elasticated washing line that I'm going to set up in a minute to dry the clothes. Absolutely glorious day as well. So I'll just make sure we've all got clean knickers. Right, I'm just going to go and see what I can get away with today on this budget week. I'm going to take a selection of items to Peg and I'm going to test her to see if I can have any of them. She doesn't know the camera's here. This is just to test her dedication to the cause. Peg, um, I was just wondering, um, today do you think that our budget could stretch to a 12 bar? That's 25p. 25p? We, we're on a five pound eating budget today. If I just sniff the twill bar, does that count? Does that cost anything? Twill, twill moustache. What about this delicious... 37p. 37p. <laughs> this delicious packet of crisps. Okay, I'm going to go for the about. piece de la resistance. I have no idea. <laughs> I can see what it is. I have literally it, it have is... no idea how much that is, but I would say that that is, that's dear bit, great taste. It's from a craft brewery. So it, it, we could just have this peg and, and nobody would know, would they? I'd know. You'd know. And you'd know. And I'd know. So you'd be cheating yourself. We'd be cheating ourselves. You'd be letting the side down. You'd be We'd letting yourself down, Rob. You've let yourself down. <laughs> You've let the school down. down. You've let the whole motorhome community down. So <laughs> You've let the whole motorhome community down by not drinking the beer. <laughs> This is what we had on this day and the costs. Where are we, Rob? We are in Eccleston this evening. Wow. So what have we got behind us? We've got the River Dee, is it Peg? Yeah, yeah River Dee behind us. River Dee, and the reason we're here today is that our good friend Jo is paddleboarding here right now. Yeah, so we've taken some footage of her and she's training somebody up who seems to be doing a fantastic job of learning how to paddle. Better than me. Yeah, <laughs> damn sight better than me. We've also got opposite us, we're looking out onto the Duke of Westminster's Cheshire Estate at Eton. Eccleston Ferry is so called because there was a ferry here before World War II. It's a couple of miles upstream of Chester and was formerly a hive of activity. It is still busy now and popular with paddle boarders and canoeists who enjoy one of the most beautiful stretches of the River Dee. Most of the land forms part of the Duke of Westminster's huge Cheshire estate. 
Access to a parking spot can be difficult on good days as the parking area is not large and it's free. This is what we had on this day and the costs. Good morning, good morning, morning. Peg. <laughs> so we spent a lovely quiet night at Eccleston. A lot better than I thought it was going to be because it was so busy all day and all evening. Yeah, I mean, up until nine, maybe a bit later, it was just packed with paddleboarders, kayakers, people fishing. There was a lot going on. And then even after 9pm, once the car park had cleared and it was pitch black, there were still people, a few people came and went, yeah. shall we say. Uh, we don't know what they were doing, but there was a bit of evidence this morning in the car park. Yeah, when um, Rob got up this morning to have a look outside, there was a, a load of litter all round the bins, right by the bins, all strewn around the bins. It could have been that somebody had partially tidied things up and a fox had got there. I don't know what had gone on. A fox couldn't have jumped into those bins. They were too high. Um, but we decided that we would tidy up because we just thought, you know, we've stayed here overnight and we haven't paid anything for it. But also we know that motorhomers get a bad reputation. It was OK in the end to stay there. Probably not suitable for the size of a van that we've got. Perhaps for a, a smaller van it would have been better. And I think if you're somebody who canoes, if you've got a canoe or if you're a paddleboarder, I think it would be an ideal place for you to go for that activity. Oh yeah, it's amazing in that respect. Yeah. But I don't think that we'd probably go there again ourselves, to be yeah. honest. Not not for an overnight stay. It's, it wasn't the most relaxing place to be all day, was it? There was car doors slamming them, and we were boxed in for a while. And people That were was tired. the concern. But it was free. Um, so, yeah, another success, Peg. And it was a different place to be and a lovely place to go for a walk. There's an open day for the museum tomorrow. Normally you have to pay for the museum, but the, the actual Lady Lever is one of the eight museums. There's a, a plane going overhead. It's one of the eight museums of Liverpool, of Merseyside, that are free. Where are we, Rob? We're in Port Sunlight Village. At the Lady Lever Art Gallery. And um, we're just at the Diamond here. So we've just had a little look around the Lady Lever Art Gallery. It's one of our favorite places here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I've been here many times before. And it's free. All eight museums of Merseyside and Liverpool are free, so it's well worth a visit to come round. They're absolutely fantastic resources, and the artwork in there is all that William Hesketh Lever Hume. Um, they're all the different things. What a f***ing plane again. <laughs> you have to beep that out, Peg. <laughs> so it's been free to go round there. It's one of my favourite places. Loads of gorgeous pre Raphaelite paintings in there, and some beautiful, beautiful pieces of art. We used to live in Port Sunlight. It's a lovely village on the Wirral Peninsula, founded by William Hesketh Lever. He built beautiful arts and craft style houses for his workers at the Sunlight Soap Factory. It is worth seeing the stunning architecture of the houses alone, but there is also a museum, fabulous art gallery, and beautiful gardens and parkland to stroll around. Peaky Blinders was filmed at various locations around Merseyside and Port Sunlight was selected as the location for Aunt Polly's house. It's also used as a location when Father Hughes sadistically beat Tommy Shelby after he'd attended the fate for the orphans, which was set in Port Sunlight's Dell. The bridge and the outside of the Lyceum Club were featured in those memorable scenes. There was a Peaky Blinders open day on our visit, so we had a bit of fun trying on the hats. This is where we stayed. We had a nice, peaceful night. We've now run out of muesli, so it's on to something else. So I've, I always keep a bit of flour in for, for doing bits and pieces. So it's pancakes today. I've got one banana left as well, so it's gonna be a banana pancake. Hit a bit of a snag today whilst editing this video we've run out of battery on the laptop i remembered that we'd got this inverter we bought a few years ago and we'd never used it previously but i've just hooked it up to the habitation batteries 
and it's actually working a treat it's charging the laptop really quickly so I'm really pleased with this and uh, it's something that we can use uh, in emergencies such as this this is what we had on this day and the costs Edna Country Park is a former clay hole and landfill site, now a country park which is an ideal destination for a walk. There's a free car park and a tarmac pathway to make it ideal for buggies and scooters. The three mile Buckley Heritage Trail can also be joined here. And this is where we spent Saturday night. Where are we Peg? We're at Etna Park near Buckley. North Wales. And last night we stayed on the car park here overnight. What did you think? It was absolutely fine. We're right by the road um, and you would have thought that there'd be noise but it wasn't noisy. I slept well. Yeah I slept well. Really had very little traffic go past us in the night. One person came into the car park that I'm aware of before we went to bed. Yeah and beeped. But the, I don't know whether that was a creature or something like that. It was only one beep. There wasn't a lot of noise and I was a bit concerned with it being Saturday night. Yeah, so really there's no trouble at all. We slept well, we felt very safe. Yes, there are dog walkers coming in and out Lots now. Of people come to walk the dogs or joggers, you know, it's that kind of a place really. But other than that, it's quite discreet, uh, very rural and uh, not too many people about. So yeah, we've really enjoyed it and we yeah. definitely come back here again. Yeah. This is what we had on this day and the costs. There's three main apps that we use. We use Search for Sites, Camper Contact and Park for Night. So there are three main ones, but we also use other things. Yeah, so those are extremely useful, but you can't beat local knowledge, talk to other people and even Google. So we found all those different ways, different ways of finding places to stay. Yeah, and we often Google the local council as well to find out what the parking restrictions are in the area. So that's another way of finding out when you're in a locality where you can park or where where they'll link because some councils actually actively encourage people and some councils actively discourage them yeah so we've been very surprised to learn those that do there's plenty of places out there google it and you'll find that uh, yeah you might be pleasantly surprised where you can park we have a rule of thumb though and i think a lot of couples do this if either one of us doesn't feel easy when we stay there so if we have mm. a gut reaction to it where we don't feel at ease we move on yeah i mean we've certainly been on car parks that allow motor homes but then you get the kid racers there at night yeah and um, you just don't feel it's not a pleasant experience so in those cases you can always move on right okay now for the reality mm. so we spent £94.50 over the week rather than the £70 target and that was mainly because of the fuel. I think we spent over £40 Peg, didn't we? Yeah. Just on fuel. So if we'd have planned our route a bit better we could have brought that down significantly or if we'd have stayed in the same place more than one night then that could have also helped significantly. So yes we, we didn't meet our target yeah. but we could have done with better planning. I mean we often feel if you're free camping somewhere that it's good to move on after a day yeah. and to move on early as well that's another rule that we have we don't want to take the mick out of it. I could have planned the food a lot better. I did pretty well and I did some days where we had literally six meals for less than a fiver which I think is pretty good going. We did this week on the spare of the moment didn't we? Yeah well, we, no, we didn't plan we for didn't, this we just thought oh let's just let, do this. Let's do it so we did it ad hoc. Had we had more time to plan I could have really thought about the cheapest mm, meals yeah. that we could have done as well and I don't think we would have saved more than maybe £10 over the week but I could have done it cheaper. I mean I still think it was pretty cheap as yeah. it was and uh, we didn't cheat at all so uh, that, that hurt a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing to say is that we didn't factor insurance into this no. and the thing that really kills us in reality is maintenance you know when you look at it the bigger picture if you looked at it over a year over a would, year you would definitely have to factor in those costs there are extra costs sometimes those are big costs 
those are things that you really have to take into consideration. Do you know what? I'd do it again. It was a good fun challenge to do. It was do. a good fun challenge and we needed to as well because since we'd come back off our big travel we had been thinking oh we'll go out for meals and we'd been meeting up with people a lot more than we, yeah. we would do as well so we've had more cause for celebration and we've had more cause to spend money. I know yeah so we <laughs> needed to save most definitely. Yeah and uh, we'll do it again. Yeah and this was a great way of doing it it's just sort of a little challenge to, to make it a bit of fun when you're basically trying to spend as little as possible. Do you think we could do it for 70 quid though? Watch, watch do you know, I think we might find it easier to do it for 70 quid in France than we would in the UK. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, I, it's a lot easier abroad to find free places to stay, and to free water, water, empty your toilets yeah. free. You know, so these are things you, you've got to pay for in the UK. I'd be really interested to know how cheaply anybody else can do it as well, because I'm sure some of you are far better at budgeting than we are. Um, and some maybe think it's absolutely ridiculous to spend, you know, five pound per day per person on living costs. Yeah, yeah. So although we didn't meet the challenge, we've had a good time. Mm. We did. We loved it. We loved doing it. It was good fun. We've ate well. We've been out yeah. every day. We've done really interesting things. We've even yeah. been out for a celebration. So yeah. what more can you want? We didn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs>